Obtaining pure substances is very important when it comes to chemistry. One way to tell if a substance is pure or not is by testing to see what its melting point or boiling point is. If it's pure, it should be a very specific temperature. If it doesn't melt or boil at the temperature that you thought, then it's impure. There are impurities in it. A formulation is a mixture that has been specially designed to be useful in a very specific way, with very specific quantities of different substances used to make things like paints, fuels, alloys, fertilizers, etc. Think of George's Marvelous Medicine as being the ultimate formulation. Chromatography is a way of separating substances in a mixture, for example pigments in inks or drugs in a urine sample. The stationary phase, often special chromatography paper or just filter paper, is what the substances move up, with the help of the mobile phase, often just water, which rises up the paper due to capillary action, dragging lighter particles further up the stationary phase. We draw the line at the bottom in pencil so it doesn't move with the mobile phase, the water. Then at the end of the process, we measure how far the mobile phase has moved and also how far the substances have moved to. These are both measured from the starting line. We can then calculate an RF value that stands for retention factor for each spot. That's just a ratio of how far a substance, a spot has moved compared to the mobile phase. So it ends up being a number between zero and one. We can then compare RF values of our spots with known RF values to identify what's in our mixture. If we think we have hydrogen in a test tube, we can test for this by holding a burning splint over the test tube, and it'll produce a squeaky pop if it is. Oxygen will relight a glowing splint. Carbon dioxide will turn lime water cloudy when bubbled through it. Chlorine gas will bleach damp blue litmus paper, that means turn it white. We can test for some metals using flame tests. Lithium will produce a crimson flame, sodium yellow, potassium lilac, calcium orange red and copper green. We can also test for some metals in solutions by adding sodium hydroxide. If aluminium, calcium or magnesium are in the solution, a white precipitate will be formed. However, if it's aluminium, the aluminium hydroxide produced will then dissolve if excess sodium hydroxide is added. Copper 2 ions, that is Cu2 plus ions, form a blue precipitate. Iron 2, green precipitate, iron 3, brown. You might have to complete an ionic equation for these, for example the copper and hydroxide ions making copper hydroxide, and you have to make sure it's balanced too. Carbonates react with acids to make carbon dioxide gas, and we can use lime water to test for that. We test for halide ions, that's halogen ions, by mixing with silver nitrate solution and nitric acid. If chloride ions are present, silver chloride is made, that's a white precipitate. If it's bromide ions, silver bromide is made, that's cream. Silver iodide, yellow. Finally, sulfate ions will produce a white precipitate when mixed with barium chloride and hydrochloric acid. In proper labs with lots of money, they use instrumental methods to determine what substances they have. These instruments are accurate, sensitive and fast. For example, they can do flame emission spectroscopy, flame tests on steroids. The light produced by a flame is passed through a spectroscope, which can identify exactly what wavelengths are emitted, which can then be used to identify these metal ions. So I hope you found that helpful. Leave a like and a comment if you did. And click on the card to take you to the playlist for all of the papers. And don't forget to check out the Science Shorts app to help you test your knowledge.